10. 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Blast off! <laughs> you can stand right here. Uh, good morning, ladies and gentlemen, doctor. My name is Steve, if you guys forgot. Uh, it's on the board. Uh, last name is pronounced Heilman, not Heilman. Um, the item I brought in today, as you all can see on the screen here, um, is an old 50 cent piece. Uh, you can't read it, so I'll flip it over. You can enlarge that. There's a, but a plus button that can make it larger. Plus? Got it. It says the year 1937, right here. Uh, like this coin, it's got smooth edges and hard edges, just like I do. The smooth edges are my softer, sensitive side, uh, my caring side, the people that I care about. And the hard edges um, are what make me a man. I joined the military when I was 21 years old. Um, and like that coin, the hard edges uh, are what made me a man. Um, this coin was carried by my grandfather in World War II. It was his good luck charm. And the soft spots are where he would rub it with his thumb when he was hoping for good luck. Uh, he then passed the coin down to my father who joined the service when he was 18 years old, left home, joined the army. My father later passed it down to my brother who climbed grain bins over 150 feet tall and would do the same thing. He would rub the coin for good luck every time before he climbed the grain bins. And my brother thought, you know, you're going off to the service, you need it more than I do. So he handed it down to me and uh, I've carried it with me every single day since then. And whenever I need a little bit of good luck, just rub it. Um, that's why this coin symbolizes me. Person should be sitting up there. there we go. Okay. <laughs> All right. Hello, everyone. My name is Kyle. Um, I'm not from here. I'm from Florida. The object that I brought today: classic Rubik's cube. I believe this represents me because I treat every single challenge just like this puzzle. Um, when I was in high school, I saw a person that I thought I was a lot smarter than walking into class solving it behind his back. And it blew me away because I always saw this thing as something that it was almost impossible and only the smartest of the smart could solve it, like in pursuit of happiness. And when I saw this person solve it, who I had no idea even had a lick of smarts in their brain, it completely changed my perception on people and how to approach challenges. I took this puzzle and it became an infatuation and through a lot of time I realized that this puzzle is actually not challenging and it's actually very accessible and anybody that really wants to put in some time you just memorize some algorithms and you can solve this thing within a couple hours. Um, then I decided I wanted to take it a little step further and I decided to really go ahead and start solving harder and harder problems and I, it grew into this huge hobby and solving um, some of the hardest puzzles in the entire world. Um, I grew into, um, some people say, like a master solver. I developed algorithms for p other people to solve similar puzzles such as this. And um, over the course of a few years, um, I grew to solving, um, it's not super famous, it's called Etan Star. I didn't bring it today because it was it's kind of big and I'm not trying to flex, but the, it, I was one of the first people to solve it and developed algorithms for other people to solve it. And it, this tiny puzzle that I saw this person walking into class changed my life because it not only taught me how to solve this, but it taught me how to solve other problems in my life. Treating every single thing in life as a puzzle that you need to solve completely changes a, a mindset in general. And 
as you solve this, you start to solve your own inner problems. And it's, it's so funny how I went from this kid who couldn't even focus on a single thing for more than 10 seconds to this person that can sit down with this huge behemoth of a puzzle and sit there for two hours and really just crank it out. And it helped me in school. It helped me um, study for my tests. My grades went up. Everything went up. It was one of the greatest things that ever happened to me. So to know me is to know about the Rubik's Cube. Thank you. Hi everybody, my name is Hope. Um, so the object that I brought today was a water polo ball. Um, I'm a student athlete at Miramar College. That's my main like college that I go to. Um, the ball represents my motivation and goals. I'm the one that drives the ball through the water. The water is my life. Uh, obviously, it's the basis of life. And then, um, sorry, I'm really nervous. So the water, it like, I'm moving through it, it's my path in line, I'm guiding it, I'm going through it. Um, when I shoot the ball, obviously it's my motivation and goals, and so when I shoot the ball and the goal, then I achieve what I want. Uh, my teammates and coaches are representing my family and friends. They push me to my hardest limits, past my limits actually. They push me, they motivate me, they pretty much are always there for me. Um, so yeah, it's very important to me. It doesn't define who I am, but it represents a piece of me. Thank you. this hideous statue of a French Bulldog uh, because it tells me that dreams come true and patience pays off. Um, I've been wanting to have a French Bulldog for about like six or seven years. It's pretty much as long as I've been married and I've been asking my husband to get me one for Christmas. I imagine that one day I would wake up, go and find a giant box under the Christmas tree and I will open it and there will be a French Bulldog puppy with a giant red bow but it didn't happen so every year Christmas after Christmas I was getting disappointed and I got this statue from my mother-in-law because she thought that I will never gonna get a real puppy because my husband doesn't think that French Bulldogs are real dogs so I thought I, you know, going to need to find a different approach and I can just patiently wait. And my strategy was just to wait for a big fight and one day be like, hey, let's get a puppy. And he wouldn't be able to say no. So this summer, lucky us, we got a French Bulldog puppy and he is the biggest joy of my life. And... Um, you're welcome to follow him on Instagram. It's a French bulldog, <laughs> Philip, Philip with one L. And so, um, yep, that's my story. <laughs> Hello, my name is Andrew, and the first thing I can find on me that represents me, because I wasn't here the other day, is my keychain, uh, UCLA. I don't know if you guys can see it. Um, this represents me a lot because UCLA is one of the places I dreamed of going since high school. I always used to go on uh, summer camps there, I would stay there, I would do a lot of programs with people, I would get used to the campus. I, like, I know the campus. So much where I just want to go there. So this is like one of my goals. This drives me. Classes I go to helps me get my grades up. It's when I'm like going through classes, like of course finals. I'm just like uh, I want.
want to do this, but I always remember of UCLA, and it's always with me. So anytime I'm like, I'm out of the loop, I just look down and I see UCLA. So I feel like it just pushes me more to do things to the best of my ability. And that's. Hello, my name is Rebecca Mueller, and this is a surf trophy I won in Baja. Surfing has been a huge part of my life um, for as long as I can remember. I really wanted to surf because both my brothers surfed and I wanted to do anything that they did. So growing up in La Jolla has been a huge part of my life and it shaped who I am, the community that I've met there. Um, every surfboard is shaped uniquely and no board is alike and I believe that every person is shaped uniquely and none is alike. Surfing also brings a lot of joy to people and I hope that I would bring a lot of joy to my friends and just uh, spread that contagiousness. And then thirdly, surfboards are meant to be in the water and I feel as though I'm meant to be in the water. It's just something that gives me a lot of excitement and peace. It's really good for your mental health, emotional, and I couldn't picture myself in a gym so definitely surfing is my happy place, and I think it represents me. Thank you. Hi everybody, my name is Diego Hernandez, I'm 18 and originally from Mexico and what I decided to present today was a, a necklace given by my grandparent. Um, three reasons why I chose this was because it's simple, reminds me where I'm from and what I want to be in life. Um, to start off, I'm not a very flashy guy so that's why I like it because it's not too shiny, just like me. I just Try to stay on the low. Um, it reminds me of where I'm from because it was a gift from my grandparent uh, in Mexico. Uh, thankfully, he's still with me, and he always calls me and says if I still have it, and I say I do. Um, also, what I want to be in life, I don't want to be a soccer player because my dreams were crushed. Like I knew I wasn't good enough, so I decided I wanted to be a physical therapist for a professional soccer team which was, it's still pretty hard to get there, but what soccer all my life has taught me is that if you work consistently, anything is possible, and um, that's why I chose to present my necklace. Thank you. Hi everyone, I'm Carolina Marquez and I brought in this scarf today to represent my self-expression through fashion and my commitment to environmental sustainability. I've always loved expressing myself through fashion and the way I dress. It, my love for fashion has also served as a segue for me to experiment with other types of creative expression like visual art and photography. This scarf also represents my commitment to environmental sustainability. Like my jacket, shirt, and pants, I purchased it secondhand. <clears throat> I buy half of my clothes secondhand or gently used as part of my transition to a waste-free lifestyle. And I feel that my scarf represents me because I care for the environment and I care about fashion. And thank you.
Good morning, everyone. My name is Savannah Postma. The object that I brought in today uh, that is significant to me is my Marine Corps dog tags. Uh, I joined the Marine Corps when I was 18 years old. I was inspired by my older sister. She joined. Um, she's not the biggest person in the world, so that kind of inspired me to join the Marine Corps. Um, but one of the reasons that this is so significant to me is because every day when I wear it, I think about all the people that I've met through the Marine Corps and how I'm so thankful uh, to have met them and been able to spend time with them the last three, almost four years. I've, uh, I've created a good family in the Marine Corps and everyone that I'm with, they are going to be a part of me forever. Thank you. My name is Emma. Today I brought in this sticky note of the um, book of Frida Kahlo. I know it's really random, but this just proves how much stuff I have like about her. And I didn't want to bring in a giant poster, so I just brought that in. Um, I love Frida Kahlo. I love her art. I've always been inspired by her art as in the way that people are inspired by music. Um, her, my favorite painting of hers is called Columna Rota, which means the broken column. Um, she went through a lot of hardship in her life, and I feel like I, has been, I have been as well, and so observing her art brings me like a lot of um, peace in knowing that other people have been through stuff too. Thank you. Hi, my name is Austin Mathis. I'm 22 years old. This is my second year at Mesa College. I'm working on finishing prereqs to go to nursing school, uh, hopefully either at SDSU or just another place here in San Diego. I am mostly from San Diego. My dad was in the Navy growing up, all through high school, until I was in high school. I've lived all over the place. I've lived in Hawaii, Oregon, Florida, and here, so uh, all ocean places. And I think that really, uh, kind of molded me into the person I am today. I'm a huge ocean person. That's why I brought in my swim fins. Uh, in the summers, I also lifeguard at Mission Beach. And they're just something that I think, they don't, not really an analogy, but something that's important to me that I use for like having fun, body surfing when surf's big, and also to use to go out and affect rescues in a timely manner and have like, give me the power to swim like a person into the surf and all that. And also, I think that's just cool memories. Like, the paint's kind of wearing off, but I was instructor for JGs uh, last two years, and we do a day where like the JGs love to paint fins, and I let them paint mine. It's just kind of cool to look at them, just like remember all those like good times of having those kids like get stoked in the ocean, and, like share the same stoke that I have. So, yeah. thank you. So my name is Jessica Lamb, and I'm currently majoring um, at probiology at Mesa right now. And this is my second year, hopefully planning transfer to like Irvine or Santa Barbara. And the object that I brought today is a necklace of the Laughing Buddha. So many people think that this necklace is Buddha, but actually he's a monk that originated from China. And he signifies like the protector of children, the poor, and the weak. So my mom gave this to me when I was around six. And ever since then, I've worn it with me. And it brought me a sense of security. Like my mom is always there with me. And I feel like it's my good luck charm in some way. Every time I'm like stressed or nervous or I feel like I can't do something, I just rub his belly because he has a big belly. And um, yeah, and it just brings me a sense of comfort that my mom's there with me and my family's there with me. And yeah.
Thank you. I'm from Washington and today I brought my journal. Um, my journal is where I reflect on my thoughts and decisions that I've made. At first sight it may seem like it is concentrated on the past but it is actually completely about the future. When I write in my journal I relieve my stress and my stress is relieved because writing gives me hope um, for a better tomorrow by reviewing past decisions, right or wrong, and entering the future with prior knowledge. It allows me to make better decisions because history seems to repeat itself. I'm sure that I will see similar obstacles in the future, but I'll enter with a different understanding. This journal holds every piece of who I was, who I am, and who I will be. I am an aerospace and mechanical engineering student and the object I brought today is um, it's a reversible torque wrench. This is very special for me because one of these was uh, one of the very first uh, tools I added to my toolbox and it has many features I like. Um, I, also, I, I also decided to bring this because this is what inspired me to, to get into the, uh, into the worlds of mechanics. I do, love, I do love doing mechanics on cars, motorcycles, even lawn mowers, anything from small to big engines. And the features I love about this is that it's reversible and it's adjustable, so you can adjust the amount of rotational force or torque you give to an object, uh, to a nut. So I see that those feature re features represent some uh, parts of myself. Uh, the, uh, the feature that reverses so you can tight or, tighten or loose nuts, uh, I feel that represents both my duality culturally because I was born and raised in a Mexican city in a Mexican family um, since I, uh, until I was 16 years old. So I have been adopted to American culture since then. And uh, well, while I still preserve all my Mexican heritage. Also the, the feature to adjust the amount of force or torque you want to give to to a nod is something that also is reflected in myself because uh, when I need to be serious in something or I need to be uh, sensitive or even even funny, I can I can be whatever between it needs to be according to the situation. And yeah, thank you so much. Halbert and today I brought in a, I'm a transferring a computer science major and today I brought in a CD from Tears for Fears. The reason I brought in this CD is because it means a lot to my life. When I was young I learned how to play piano and ever since it kind of gave me a goal to keep doing things in life, keep pushing myself. It's helped me make many great friends throughout my life that have helped me get to where I am today and helped me feel like somebody. And it's just been kind of great, and it's grown my love for music that I hope to continue on for a while to come. Thank you. today is my camera Canon Rebel XS um, the reason why this um, object is very uh, it's a it's a very uh, 
sentimental object is because it was given to me when I was 16 by my mom and my mom has recently passed away so I feel a bit more connected through the camera as well as I feel the components of the camera to achieve an image represent me. For example, the lens in the camera, you cannot take a picture without the lens. It helps focus on an object that you want to capture. And the lens in my life is my determination. Once my determination is focused on something, I'm able to achieve it. I wanted to be um, the best employee at work, and I was able to focus my determination into that, that I won Employee of the Year in 2018. And that is why I can relate to my camera, and that is why I chose the object. Good morning, everyone. My name is Isabella Gibbs. So the object that I brought is a Muay Thai glove. Um, recently this summer, I started taking up Muay Thai, and it has honestly changed my life so much. So before this, I've never done anything like this. Uh, growing up, I did hula, and then um, in high school, I did cheer. So this is completely out of my comfort zone. And when I first started, I was kind of like in a bad place in life. Like I really had like no confidence and. I never thought like I could do something like this but doing this has taught me that stepping out of your comfort zone can bring you to the best places in your life and doing this has just showed me that I can do a lot more than I think I can and a quote by Tamara Taylor says as long as you keep going you'll keep getting better and as you get better you gain confidence and that alone is success. <clears throat> Are you okay with me hanging this up or would you rather under No, I can't see it. So if you could put it up here, is that okay? Yeah, it'll work. Yeah. Perfect. Okay. Hi everyone, my name is Sarah um, and I brought in a dream catcher. Um, this dream catcher is from um, a small village in the middle of the Amazon rainforest. Um, it's very special to me because the people that I've met in the village, the children, the parents, um, the elders of the village, really kind of reminded me that um, people with almost no resources sometimes have the purest of hearts. Um, they taught me to open my heart um, to the idea of slowing down and really realizing kind of what's important in life. Um, so there's different parts of the dream catcher that um, I think are related to my life and a little bit symbolic of who I am. So the circle um, reminds me of a mandala um, and the the mandala is a symbolic representation of the whole psyche and your whole sense of self. Um, so it also anticipates the development of your whole personality um, and it creates a more balanced self um, and a more well-rounded person. Uh, the center bead uh, traditionally is symbolic of the spider who created the web, um, but I like to think of it as myself, so the center bead would be myself. The web would indicate the filtering power of our minds. Um, I'm a big believer in that we have the power of our, we have the power to determine our own destiny. Um, we can construct and rebuild our lives as we see fit, um, and it just is a reminder that we have that power within ourselves. The beads around the perimeter of the dream catcher, um, for me, represent the network of my family, friends, peers, and mentors um, that provide structure, support. Um, for me when I'm going through these changes or rebuilding or continuing to construct different parts of my life. Um, and they help me stay centered in that, the middle of that circle. Lastly, um, the three hanging feathers here um, represent three different things that, that I hold dear um, to my life. First is self-love, um, second is, is empowerment, and the third would be um, the human connection, which is something that I'm really kind of working on right now. 
um, I believe that human connection really creates a channel for um, the knowledge that we hold within ourselves and we can connect with other people that way. Um, so in conclusion, um, this expanded... Morning, classmates. My name is Danger Preston. It's my real first name, but that's a whole nother speech we'll get to another time. My object is the flag of Thailand. And the flag of Thailand is important to me because the second time I left the US, I went to Thailand. The first time was to Afghanistan. It wasn't nearly as fun as being in Bangkok. And when I was over there, I was a US Marine working at the embassies. And I realized that being in our place, you learn a lot every day because you don't know anything when you've been in a place you've never been. So I learned a lot about the food and the culture, holidays. I learned to speak a little bit of Thai. I learned Pong Pu Pasa Dai Dai Kap, which means I can speak a little bit of Thai, which is enough to impress the Thai girls and just enough for them to laugh at you and say, silly throng, you can't speak Thai. Uh, I've been to 29 countries since I left there. And I think that a lot of that has to do with how much I enjoyed my time being there first leaving the US. I spent the last few years living on a backpack, traveling the world, I probably would have done that. My first stop was in Thailand. So that's my object. Top and top. I brought in a bracelet from a concert that I went to. I brought it in because music's a huge part of my life. I've like grown up listening to music since like I can remember. And my dad showed me like concerts at a young age and something that I've like always really liked. And I got to go see my favorite band, Tim Paulo. Uh, and this is the wristband from it. So that's what I brought in. Thank you. My name is Samantha and I brought my yoga mat. So my average day mainly consists of the usual like school, work, eating, sleeping, but in between the main parts there are a good amount of jumpy, irrational thoughts, overanalyzing, comparing myself to others, and psyching myself into feeling inadequate for not being able to find like a niche for me to fit into. But then I come back to my yoga mat and I remember to breathe for once and I remember to let go of what I don't need. I, remem I remember to accept myself for any given moment regardless of what happens on and off the mat. And I stop overthinking about the past and the future and I'm finally grounded into the present moment. A yoga instructor, Jason Car Crandell, once said that the nature of yoga is to shine the light of awareness into the darkest corners of the body, and that's how I feel when being on my mat. My yoga mat has helped me realize that the only niche that I really do want to belong to is my own, and that's why I really appreciate my mat so much. Thank you. Hi, my name is Philip, and I'm an addict. 
I'm also the senior citizen in this class, apparently. Um, I am in my final year here in uh, Mesa, going to transfer to San Diego State next semester, as I said, major. Um, I am also a creative. I mean, there's, there's a lot about me that I like to go through. I'm not as logical or practical, which has led me into my career. And I think if I want you guys to know something about me, it's important that I tell you about my career because it's probably the most telling thing about me. Um, the object that I brought today is a magnifying glass. For you science buffs, we refer to those as convex lenses. Um, produces a closer, larger image of an object. The lens represents me. I am, by my career, I'm 38 years old, I've been an addictions therapist for the last four years? Just four, yeah, just four years. Um, and I do addiction, you know, drug, sex, food, any type of addiction that, um, it's the, you know, the pathological disease where we get stuck on something. So I assist people in my life at a psychiatric hospital, which is a lot of fun. Um, two things about this that is telling for me. So it's an antique magnifying glass that I was stoked to get. It is a gazelle horn um, antique magnifying glass. I love antiques. I collect them. But the other thing is a little bit more figurative, and that is that it is a lens that is looked through. And so as a therapist, I um, work with, with a lot of adolescents specifically, but a lot of families as well. And um, it takes a deeper and closer look into the subject that I'm presented with. I never take anything for face value. I'm constantly breaking things down in my mind and um, kind of trying to rationalize, you know, underlying. And everything has an underline. And, and figuratively, you wouldn't be able to see these things without having that magnifying lens and being able to take that closer look. Without it, you would never be able to see it. So I feel a lot of times that in people's lives, I am that lens and they take that closer look, they're able to stop and see what it is that they are addicted or connected to, and then I assist them out of that. So figuratively, it's the lens that takes a closer look. Also, I ignite a fire. A lot of people that I, that I come into contact and work with are not motivated, you know, and so they, um, they fall to their ailments of addiction. And if you've ever heard, it's an old trick, you, you put a, a sunlight through a magnifying lens and it ignites a fire. And so figuratively, that's kind of what I do in my work. I ignite fires in people to ignite and burn motivation, to start um, making better decisions, healthier decisions uh, in my life. In the words of Martin Luther King Jr., he once said that every man must decide whether he walk in the light of creative altruism or in the darkness of destructive selfishness. And in the path of my life and my career, I've chosen altruism, which is the service to others. Thank you. Kevin, and in order to introduce myself, I thought it appropriate to talk about some of my time in the military, as those were the most formative and important years of my life so far. Uh, I joined the military at 18, I joined the Navy as an aviation rescue swimmer, and I served a six-year contract. At the end of it, my friends got together and presented me with this plaque that they made that I thought would be a good visual representation of some of my accomplishments uh, while I was in the military. So the first thing that grabs your eye, the first thing you'll notice is the squadron name and squadron patch occupy the top and the center respectively. It's fitting that the squadron occupies the place of honor, both places of honor, as while I was overseas they became my family and a lot of the most important lessons I've learned in life were learned at that squadron. Just below that you'll see enlisted rank insignia. That brings back memories of my development as a leader and from but the entire development from my initial fumbling, clumsy attempts to the growth into what I can be proud of as a leader. Next to that, you'll see a pair of golden wings. These take about two years to get and a great deal of effort. And for me, it represents and symbolizes my ability to aim at a distant target and continue towards it until I finally get it. At the bottom, you'll see a record of rescues and medical evacuations that I performed while at that squadron. And at those times, I had to push myself well past what I thought my limits were and uh, well, well outside my comfort zone. And 
any time that any challenges arise in life, I can look back on those and remember the strength I have. Finally, and most importantly on the back, are names and messages from some of the greatest friends I've ever made. And these people bore witness to my development over time and indeed facilitated it. Their importance to my life can't be overstated. As I said, this plaque was made by the people who knew me best in life, who still know me best in life, and as it hangs on my wall, it uh, serves as a daily reminder of my time. Thank you. Hi everyone, my name is Ryer, Ryer Dog, and today I brought my camera. Um, this camera is special to me because it was my mom's first camera, and she gave it to me, and now it's my first camera. Um, and I'm glad that I get to share something unique and creative, um, like photography, with her. First thing about this camera is the lens allows the camera to absorb the light and see my friends, my family, the scenery, my travels, whatever I'm shooting. And that's just like my eyes, I get to experience and focus on the world um, and everything that I'm experiencing. In addition, I get to adjust the settings of this camera, the ISO, the aperture, the shutter speed, just like I get to adjust my feelings, uh, my emotions as I'm experiencing the world. And lastly, this camera is unique because it's a film camera and I get to develop the film, sometimes months after I take the picture. Um, and that's just like me and I'm still developing. I'm developing who I am as a person, and I get to do that with this camera, alongside my mom and my family and my friends, and so that's why I brought this today. Thank you. Everyone, my name is Crystal, and an object that defines me is this Chargers jersey. <clears throat> it's my favorite sport to watch, and I've watched it since I can remember. I was about six or seven years old. Um, this player is also my favorite player. His name is Keenan Allen. Um, his number is 13, which is also my favorite and lucky number. Um, to me, this jersey also symbolizes family. Football brings my family together on Sundays for family day, and no matter what team we root for, we always have a good time together, and family is something I truly cherish. Thank you. Hi, my name is Tyler, and um, an object that defines me is this football. I played football in high school for three years, and um, it helped shape me into the person I am today. Um, because of football, I learned the importance of respect, responsibility, trust, and discipline. Thank you. Belen Hernandez. What I brought is the ring that my dad gave me uh, for my 15th birthday and a cross and two roses that my mom gave me for my 15th birthday and they just mean the world to me. I recently moved to San Diego from Ventura County 
past last July. So just having those meetings, those things with me, um, kind of makes me feel like I have them close to me. Um, and just having everything, just giving advice and anything I need. Everyone, all right, applaud yourself for your very first speech. So, everyone earned 60 points too. So, only 540 more to go. The path to stand the floating is because the camera will move. I want people to get into groups and you want to be part of the group now that you're here. Okay. You cannot fail. Well, first, print your name. First, is number 30. Yeah, hopefully, at the end that we start. Reinhardt, you can call me Kat, and I have this switch with me um, because I'm a very nerdy person, so I like different kinds of shows and games, and I'm very, I'm kind of a perfectionist, so currently I am playing Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild, and I do everything in it to 100%. And I think that is because I want to give everything 100% in whatever I do, whether it be relationships with people, or schoolwork, or um, maybe like artistic projects, and First of all, decide who you want to work with, and then decide <coughs> what type of special things <coughs> you want to do, the Grammys, the Oscars, the scholarship. I always say draw from something, like first of all, find out what your majors are, or what careers you plan to go to. I think there's quite a few people who are into nursing or healthcare, and so there are healthcare scholarships, so that's a good one to work with. But if you do a scholarship, the host will be the president of the college. So someone who doesn't have a health background, let them be the president of the college since they won't have as much to draw from in terms of classes they've taken. Because remember, half of what you say should be real. So either you're citing real sources, but also if you are a musician, what musical instrument, who gave you the musical instrument? If you are, if you do a wedding, if you do a wedding, All right. so good morning, everyone. Uh, some of you may or may not know. Uh, my name is Carl Zach. Um, I know all of you probably thought you were done with introduction speeches last week, um, but too bad. I want my sixty points, so you're gonna have to deal with me. <laughs> Um, so the reason I wasn't here uh, last week was because I was driving across the country from the East Coast uh, to move out here to San Diego. Uh, me and my fiance uh, made the trip after I got out of the military. Um, I got out on September 23rd. Uh, I did seven years. I was stationed in Hawaii and Germany. Um, however, I am originally from the East Coast. I was born in Philadelphia, uh, raised in New Jersey and Vermont. Uh, my parents split when I was younger, so I kind of bounced around a lot, um, but it was all right. Um, I graduated high school in New Jersey, ended up doing a year and a half of college. Uh, I still didn't really know what I wanted to do, so I, that's when I decided to join. Um, but when I was in Germany, which is where I just came from, uh, I got to do a lot of traveling. Uh, I worked a lot of the host nation military guys out there and uh, just leisure time we were able to travel, uh, which was nice. Um, but in my travels, uh, I saw a lot of things, met a lot of people, uh, it actually changed kind of the way that I viewed things um, from before I joined. Uh, but that's why I brought my passport. Um, 
My passport's full of stamps from places I've been all over the world. Uh, and each stamp is a reminder to me of the people that I met in the place I went to. Um, I honestly think that the travels that I you know, did uh, made me a better, more understanding person, um, which is why I brought it in. But this is my first time on the West Coast. I'm really looking forward to being here. Um, but again, I'm not from the area, so if any of your local San Diegans have any you know, tips or anything about uh, local beaches or eateries or whatever, please let me know. I'd love to hear about it. Thanks for listening.